In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid penalties and instead get tons of traffic by giving Google exactly what it wants to see. This is the same strategy that I use to get this beauty of a traffic graph that you see right here. And you can achieve this yourself by creating the correct ratio of informational versus commercial content on your website. And make sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'll be breaking this ratio down niche by niche. The way I came to this golden ratio was through data. By analyzing over 1,500 websites, my team and I uncovered the average ratios of informational versus commercial content for each industry. But why does Google care about this ratio anyways? Let's take a trip back to December 2020. On December 3rd, Google announced a huge core algorithm update. This was a big mama of an update. According to Mozcast, which measures the search result fluctuations on any given day, this update was off the charts. Webmasters in every corner of the internet seemed to be affected. But I noticed a big pattern. Tons of people in the affiliate Affiliate SEO Mastermind Facebook group were reporting complete annihilation of their affiliate sites. The devastation spread far and wide. Affiliates got rocked. So I started digging around and I noticed that a lot of the biggest affiliate sites on the net got freaking banhammered. Gear Hungry, a site that sold for $12 million, went from 750,000 visitors per month to 20,000. Improb, another mega affiliate site, went from a million visitors per month to 58,000. And Best of Machinery, ouch, just ouch. That traffic graph dropped off like a cliff. Then I checked my portfolio and I had a site that got bulldozed too. What the f***? But I figured out what happened. Here's the traffic graph for my site that got hit. You can see where I got slapped right in the face here. When I figured out what went wrong and started to apply the necessary changes, you can see that my site started skyrocketing. The traffic I have now on the site has been practically vertical ever since. Same with the earnings. Let me tell you what I figured out. Obviously, something was going on with affiliate sites in particular. Many affiliate sites were decimated. Google didn't just make some small algorithmic adjustment. So I decided to partner with Surfer on a data study. Being an investor in the company, I know that they have insane technical capability. So I asked them if they could help. I wanted to crawl a ton of affiliate sites to see if we could recognize some patterns between the winners and the losers. See, Google has this documentation on Google Search Central about doorway pages. They don't want sites that pretty much add no value and just exist to get people to click through a monetized link. Sounds a lot like some affiliate sites. But how is Google identifying this? Here's some of the theories that we had. Maybe Google was looking for affiliate sites that had a lot of affiliate links above the fold. Sounds pretty doorwayish to me. Or maybe it was ads above the fold. Maybe it was a high proportion of outbound affiliate links versus normal links. Or maybe it was a high proportion of commercial monetized content on the site versus informational content. Of all these factors we crawled and analyzed, it was only the last point that had any correlation. The more commercial content people had on their site in proportion to the informational content, the more they got hit. If a site was full of commercial content, like this example article for Best CBD Oil, the chances it got nuked went up. But if they had a good blend of informational content, like this article on Can CBD Oil Help With Nausea, then the chances went down. Here's what the data looked like. We defined an affiliate commercial page as any page that had the words best review in the title or had outbound Amazon affiliate links. The trend line is clear. The more commercial content you had, the worse the penalty was on December 3rd, 2020. Sure, there's outliers, just as there's many facets to any update, but for the most part, there's decent correlation. We then went back to Gear Hungry and all those other mega sites that got annihilated. Each of them had had over 75% commercial content. I released this previous study in a video on my channel. The link is in the description, so make sure to check it out after you watch this video. Anyways, I believed in the data and I got my team publishing exclusively informational content on the site. We were just pounding it out day after day, publishing our buns off. And a few months later, the traffic boner you see here came to full attention and the growth, not only on this site, but our entire portfolio, hit some crazy levels. And it's not just me that recovered. Martin Thomas from the Affiliate Lab applied the same strategy and got similar results. When my site recovered, it had about 70% informational versus 30% commercial content. Meaning for every seven pieces of informational content, there's three monetized pieces of affiliate content. But the truth is, I have no idea if this was the right ratio. We were publishing informational content like mad, then all of a sudden during a core update, our site skyrocketed. But it's possible we overshot this golden ratio. So that's what I'm gonna answer in this video. What is the golden ratio? And I'm gonna use data once again to smash that question out of the water. But before I do that, if you like what I'm up to here, would you please smash the like button? Studies show that smashing the like button correlates with a higher degree of success with online entrepreneurship. People that smash the like button make more money, travel more, eat better food, and even live longer. But in all seriousness, it helps my channel out a lot and lets me know you like content like this. Thanks. So here's how we conducted this analysis. We looked at 1,517 websites over various niches, from art to health to technology. 
Each of the websites we considered must have one of the following criteria. They either gained rankings and traffic in the December update, or they maintained rankings, or they lost rankings but sometimes later recovered their rankings. If a site had one of these three criteria, we can assume that Google doesn't hate their informational to commercial content ratio. And from here, we can look at various averages to see what's the sweet spot for success. If we look at all 1,517 sites as a whole, the average ratio of info to commercial content is 67% informational and 29% commercial. Why doesn't this add up to 100%? Because on average, 4% of a site is your standard homepage about and contact page type content. And again, we're defining commercial content as a page with best review in the title or affiliate links. Here we take a look at a scatter plot. Each of these little dots represents a website, and its position is determined by how much informational content it has on the x-axis and how much commercial content it has on the y-axis. As you can see, we took a large unbiased sample of websites in the study, hence why you're seeing a bunch of outliers on the left side. There's certainly quite a few websites that have more money content than informational content that survive. But this huge cluster over here on the right tells us that when it comes to the subset of surviving and thriving sites, on average, they had more informational content, 67% on average. By the way, I'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, and that's Ahrefs. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool that many search engine optimization professionals, including myself, use to get their job done. It really does do more things than I can count, but for me particularly, I use it for site audits, which help me evaluate the technical SEO health of my website so Google will love them. Competitor research, in particular, reverse engineering the keyword research and backlink strategies of my competition. And Content Explorer, which helps me figure out high search volume, low competition topics to write about. This kind of data is absolutely critical for doing SEO these days, and it's nearly impossible to get by yourself. And best of all, just because you hit the like button, Ahrefs is offering a free version called Ahrefs Webmaster Tools or AWT. Just go to ahrefs.com forward slash AWT to check it out today. Now back to the video. Now what about this fabled 60-40 ratio? There's been a lot of chatter in the SEO groups about this mythical 60-40 ratio that is currently being used as a guideline. Hell, that's the ratio I was first shooting for when my site first got hit and I wanted to recover it. To be fair, the 60-40 ratio was a pretty damn good guess. And I would say that when you're first starting a web website, 60-40 is a good guideline to stick to. But if we look at the data and you want to get scientific with it, 67% is the average amongst all niches. And don't worry, I'll be breaking it down by niche soon. I also got curious if there was a difference between niche and authority sites. Is Google being more lenient to authority sites that might have a whole bunch of backlinks propping up the domain? Let's take a look. But real quick, let's define niche and authority sites. A niche site is a site that focuses on one single niche. They're typically smaller than authority sites. For example, this site, besttablesaw.org, focuses on, you guessed it, table saws, and it only has 32 pages of content. On the other hand, we have Popular Mechanics, which has 43,000 pages and covers not only table saws, but pretty much every tool that a manly man would desire. I was curious to see if sites like this one might have different ratios because they're able to get away with it. Check it out. On the left, we have niche sites with an average of 65.6 informational content and 34.4 money content. And on the right, we have authority sites with 72.2 informational content and 27.8 money content. So my theory was wrong. Authority sites have more informational content. But that could just be because there's only so many products you can review, but there's endless amounts of informational topics to cover. By the way, if you want to see the scatter plots for niche versus authority sites, check out the link to the full case study with tons of graphs after you watch this video. Okay, now it's time to break down the ratios by niche. These results are a trip. Check out this graph. On the y-axis, we have all the various niches. The red is the average percentage of money content that sites in the niche have, and the blue, naturally, is the percentage of info content. Up here at the top, we have the coupon niche. You know, sites that just spam coupon codes. They're apparently able to get away with 98% commercial content, which goes to show that Google treats every niche differently. If all the coupon sites are made this way, then that's what's expected of coupon sites. The next aggressive niche is office supply with about 43% commercial content. On the far end of the conservative side, we have the auto niche with 19% commercial content. As you can see, there's a huge range of ratios depending on the niche. At the end of the day, you want to stay within the acceptable range that Google expects to see for your niche. Scan this graph for your particular industry. I got them all covered from music to health to legal, I got you. If you want to check out the raw data, again, go to the link in the description after you watch this video. The full study also contains more observations, such as do YMYL niches get different treatment, does publishing rate affect your ratio, and does website size make a difference? I hope you found this data useful. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one.